Hey everyone, Mark Price here at DevSlopes.com and welcome back to the coding party. You know, I almost think we should like throw coding parties. That'd be really cool. Like it's like a slumber party, but you guys like get together and you code overnight. But I just realized that's what we kind of do anyway, right? Um, so every day is a coding party. Co programmers are weird. We just code late into the night and, and keep going. I guess it's just just the way things are. So sorry, no coding party today. Just boring old normal stuff. So what we're going to do with our boring old normal stuff is uh, get a list of products. Okay, You've done this before. In fact, you want to challenge? You want to challenge yourself? Challenge your brain? Pause the video right now and create a app.get okay, for a product and then figure out how to fetch a list of products and send it back to the user. Okay, If you're up for a challenge, go do that right now and come back and tell me what happened and then test it out in Postman to see if you can get a list of products. Did you do it? I hope so. Uh, doing things on your own is how you're going to learn. Okay. Hands down, best way to do it. Code every day, watch every day. If you're just watching videos, um, you're not learning as fast as people who are actually coding. App.get. Okay, and we're going to say products. Uh, a lot of people like to ask me, Mark, should should I pluralize my APIs, products, or product? It's up to you, and it's up to what you feel is right. I've been on some projects where we do, some projects where we don't. I think keeping it singular is just fine because then there's no confusion about what you need to pluralize and what you don't. So uh, function, request, response. Okay. Put a semicolon here. Semicolons are actually optional uh, in JavaScript, but it's good to put them there. Okay. It's sloppy if you don't, and you can get warnings and certain IDEs and stuff. Okay, so what we want to do is get a list of products. How do we do that? It's actually not that hard. So we've, see this product right here? This is a mongoose model, which we've exported from another file. So we can actually use that now. So whereas here we saved something by creating a new instance of a product, okay? Here we can actually use it to do a save. So we're going to say, or a find, excuse me, a product dot find. And dot find is going to find all, okay? Find one is going to find one. So just like we did in the Mongo shell in the past, we'll put an empty, empty curly braces in there. Okay, that means just find all. And we're going to say function error products. Okay, so remember error is if there's an error and products is the, is the fetched items that it gets from the database. And keep in mind, this is asynchronous, okay? So when we do this dot find, it's going to go do a find. And then when it's done searching, okay, it's going to call one of these back here or here. Okay, so if I was to like console.log, let's say console.log three, and I did console.log one, and then console.log two, what order do you think this might be printed up in? Well, it is likely that it would be one three, and then two, <clears throat> excuse me, because uh, this is asynchronous, all right, asynchronous. So what it means is it happens on a different thread. It's processing asynchronously or separately from the main thread. So what's going to happen is one's going to go here. It's going to start this. It's going to hit three, and then when this is done, it's going to hit two, okay? Now, it may not always be that way because this is a simple fetch. We only have one item, but it could take longer. So very important to know this is asynchronous. Cool, which means we wouldn't want to, you know, we wouldn't want to say, you know, response dot send down here, because we may send something back before this even finishes, and then our, we'd be like, what's going on? It didn't work. Okay. So product dot find, and let's go ahead and say if there's an error, we're gonna say response, repulsne, response. Oh my goodness, response dot uh, status. Status, status 500, dot send, send back an error, could not fetch products, okay, otherwise we had success, we're going to say what, response, dot send, and let's send back the products, cool, that's it, okay, now like I said before, this is asynchronous, so if we said response.send, let me show you something that's bad here. 
this is what new people do. Okay, var products. Okay, All right. Let's say we just keep that there, and then right here, what some people will do is they'll say products equals products. Right. Uh, well, let's just call this prods, so you're not confused. Prods for products, right? And prods. So this prods up here is equal to the products that we got after the database fetch. And so what some people will do, let's pretend this doesn't exist here, is they'll come down here and they're assuming that, okay, we did this, the fetch, so let's put this products here in the products variable and they will say response.send prods. Okay, but this is very, 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 very bad because this is asynchronous. So what'll happen is this will be an empty variable, it's null, okay? It's gonna start the find and want, it's gonna start it on a new thread asynchronously and then it's immediately gonna jump down here and send this empty, this null variable. It's gonna send it back to the user. And you can be like, what's going on? I know my code is right. Well, it's because you're doing things wrong, okay? So this is asynchronous, so you gotta handle things uh, within the asynchronous response, okay? So you would never ever, ever do this, ever, okay? Don't ever do that. We just send the responses straight inside of the callback, okay? So if there's an error, we send back the error. If there is success, we send it back here. And it's very important to know. We're catching all the cases here. No need to put it outside. So otherwise, response that send products, okay? Let's go back to Postman and create a couple more products. So let's go ahead and make a new product here, you know, um, you know, links, shield, you know, from from Legend of Zelda. We'll make this a hundred and sixty three ninety nine. Okay, that's saved. And let's do one more. Let's just say uh, Ash's uh, chainsaw. You know, from Army of Darkness. And this is going to be two o three dot forty five. Okay. So I just added a couple more uh, items here so we can make sure it's actually working when we see a list. Okay, so HTTP localhost 3000 slash products or product, excuse me. Okay, and it's a get request, right? Not a post or put, so that's good. Okay, so I click send and we got three items. Okay, so this is really cool. These items actually live in our database. Okay, and again, just to confirm, go to the terminal go into Mongo and uh, show DBS, use the swag shop, okay? And then db.products.find, let's find them all, do dot pretty, and now we have three. So these three items are persisted in the database permanently. And even if we kill, like do the, the kill all MongoD and kill our, our, our server, Okay, and then we turn it back on, they're still gonna be there. They're actually persisted permanently, which is awesome. Okay, so this is really good. Our stuff is definitely there. And our API is fetching those things. So we just did a find and it found us an array of things. Now, this is really important. And, and there's, a big, there's a big mistake lots of people make. If you're trying to find one item and you do a find, it is gonna give you an array back no matter what, even if there's only one object in it, okay? And so what a lot of people will try and do is try and access the object, be like .id or .title on the one object, but it's actually in an array. So you actually need to get the very first element out of it first. So just know if you use .find, it's gonna give you back an array and you have to get the items out of it first before you can access, access them. Just, just know you heard it from me, from me first before you start punching your keyboard. Okay, so we got our product here. This is going great. And let's talk about wish list now. So now that we can post new products and we have a list of products, now we need the ability to create a brand new wish list, you know, like an empty wish list, right? And then what else do we need to do? We need to be able to add items or add products to a wish list. Yep, that sounds about right. So we need to be able to create a new wish list, add items to wish list, and get a list of wish lists. A, a list of wish lists. We need to do that as well too. So. Yeah, this is looking really good here. So, you know, let's call this video done, and in the next one, we'll wrap it up with the uh, with the wish lists. And uh, we're making great progress here. So, Mark Price at DevSlopes.com. Tune in next time. <laughs>